I'm gonna say something controversial. I know, what else is new? I have never, ever disliked the suit worn by Tom Holland in Spider-Man Homecoming and Captain America Civil War. I think it was something about all of the elements of classic Spider-Man suits that they just brought into this suit, especially in Spider-Man Homecoming. Do you want to know why I like this suit so much? Because it's bright red and bright blue! This suit isn't ashamed to actually be red and actually be blue with no strings attached. It's colored just like the real thing. Not to mention the thicker rimmed, smaller eyes, the more cartoonish and simple spider logos, the thinner web pattern. I don't think there will ever be a time in my life where I don't enjoy this costume. And I think there's something very clever about this suit in terms of how it implements a theme into its design. But what is the theme? Technology! Whether you enjoy the origin of MCU Spider-Man or not, we aren't opening that can of worms right now. We're talking about the suit. Let's focus on the suit. Let's take a look at these lenses. They move. We all know this. Your mom knows this. Your grandma knows it. Spider-Man's lenses move like camera lenses, and that's awesome. I am aware that Spider-Man's lenses aren't supposed to do this normally. Peter having moving lenses in the comic is only supposed to serve as a way for the reader to know how Peter is feeling at any given moment. Having Peter's lenses move as he talks to be a real in-universe thing is awesome. Even if everyone else tried to copy it and put it into their designs that don't need moving lenses, I, I swear to god, after this suit, everyone and their mom wanted to have moving camera lenses. I mean, it's a cool idea, but not every costume needs to have that. Let's take a look at the logo. This is probably the most simple front logo we have ever gotten. It's got a modern feel to it, taking the super complicated logos from before and boiling it down to the essentials. The lines are straight and the shapes are non-complex, and it goes for a non-connected approach to the spider legs, giving it a more modern feel. It's got a robotic look to it. Something about this logo just gives me the vibe of an Apple or Samsung logo. It's something about modern brands going for the most simple look they can that reminds me of this logo. The suit kinda is the Apple iPhone of all the Spider-Man suits. The web pattern also goes for a similar feel. It's almost as if they're made out of wires pretending to be shaped like a web pattern. Alright, now let's get to the most controversial part of the suit. The black lines. They work. They work really well, actually. Before, the black accent color in Spider-Man's suit only played a small role in the costume. But this suit pumps up the amount of black used in this costume while still making sure the black is only an accent color. The black lining isn't too intrusive, it's a bit weaker around the belt area in terms of quality, but it still looks good due to the fact that it usually lines the areas where the red borders the blue, leaving a little bit of red just before we get onto the blue. Very nice touch. But speaking of the blue, let's move on to the blue section. Before we get to the only thing that holds this suit back, let's get onto the one thing I like. The back logo is nearly perfect, because it works with the design. Not only do the top legs fit in with the notch within the red arch on the top of the back, it also makes the classic back logo design work well. I'll be honest, most Spider-Man suits can't pull off a round back logo, but this suit does it well by framing it within the suit's back notch and keeping it an appropriate size. The only issue I have with it is that the bottom legs are slightly different than the rest of the suit but it's only noticeable when you look hard enough, so it doesn't really ruin anything. Now let's get to the one part of this suit that does not work. The blue lines. Why? Why do you need these? You could have just had one or two, or even a few lines running up and down the blue. It would be fine. It doesn't ruin the design at all. In fact, that probably would have pumped this suit up to be one of the best, but it doesn't work. These lines aren't proportioned evenly throughout different parts of the suit. There's not enough blue lines on the arms and back compared to the shit ton of lines on the chest and leg areas. It's just not evenly proportioned, and even so, the design isn't all that aesthetically pleasing. It's complicated, needlessly complicated, compared to everything else on the suit that's incredibly simple. Also, let's take a look at these spider toes. I am aware Andrew's suits had soles, but their design was pretty low-key, so I forgot to even mention them. But this suit has sole designs. I don't have much to say about them. They look cool, they don't really add or take away from the original, but if you ask me, 
more Spider-Man suits should have soul designs. I think adding souls can add character to a part of the suit you usually don't see. For example, one of my favorite things about the PS4 Classic suit is that it has red webbed souls. That's really cool, and I wish more suits could do that. Realistically, they don't do it because the soles are the most damaged part of the suit usually because you have to walk on them, but I, I think it's still a pretty cool thing to at least make an effort towards. All right, now let's get down to the fabrics. The materials of this suit contain what appears to be matte spandex printed over with small red dots. These dots stop once they would intersect over a web line. I'm not sure what the black lining is made out of, but it might be some sort of rubber. Whatever it is, it's cracking after a little bit of wear and tear. The blue fabric is a dark blue, which also appears to be matte, printed over with a checkerboard pattern in shiny bright blue ink. You do have to commend this suit for making strides to change the fabric patterning of the Spider-Man suit. Before, everyone only ever thought to do the brick pattern Raimi and Tasm 2 did. The only one that used different patterning was Tasm 1, and honestly I should be commending this suit instead. The only reason that suit's patterning went underappreciated was because people hated that suit because the patterning made it look like a basketball. But Homecoming picks up the torch where Tasm 1's suit left it in terms of breaking away from the brick pattern. The eyes also seem to be a lot more reflective than they were in the movie. The Homecoming suit is very well put together. In fact, it's one of my favorite Spider-Man suits ever put on screen. It does an amazing job of implementing the theme of technology into its design, and innovates in several ways throughout. <sighs> but it could have easily been replaced with an already existing Spider-Man suit that takes the classic suit and fits it with tech. Part of me kind of wishes they just made this suit the Parker Industries suit. You could even make it so that his homemade suit in the movie is just the classic one from the comics. We're never going to see the Parker Industries suit on screen, and thank god, but part of me wishes we got to see this suit referenced instead of the Stark one. I think if you just put the Parker Industries suit over the Stark one, the plot would be no different, and the suit would fit the same theme the Homecoming one is already going for. It's not something I want with my whole heart, but it's definitely something I think could've and maybe should've happened. People probably would've liked that one more too, since some people hate this suit for some reason. Personally, I don't think there's enough about this suit that you can hate. The black lines? Fine, you can hate them. The blue lines? For sure, I hate those too. But it's not enough to justify hating this suit in my opinion. And if you hate this suit, I can't imagine you like the classic one all that much. I love the classic suit, and I think it's Spider-Man's best suit. Therefore, this suit's flaws just slightly downgraded, since it's just the classic suit with extra toppings. I mean, I get it though. There are some classic suits out there that I hate, like the one in Marvel Future Revolution. The logo just doesn't match the simplicity of the suit and web pattern. But hate the homecoming suit or not, it's a beautiful thing. Too bad Far From Home burnt the damn thing to smithereens, only for the suit quality to get much worse. Every day I wake up and I hope you're dead. Dead like if I can guarantee Henry would be okay. I'd hope you get an illness and then get hit by a car and die.